Coming to you live. G'day, I'm James. And I'm Matthew. And this is your Sijin Wave Australian News Update. For the 8th of April, 2020. Our top stories for Wednesday. Yes, gaming news today. Oh, I've got some fun stuff to chat about. So, the PlayStation 5 controller has been uh, revealed today. And uh, what an interesting design we have, I have to say. So, check this out, Matthew. Wow. Looks futuristic. Yes, so... This is the new PlayStation 5 controller, and it's called the DualSense. So, we used to have the name DualShock, it's now going to be called the DualSense. IGN has the article here about the controller, and they're saying that its name DualSense means they'll bring a sense to touch to the PlayStation 5 gameplay. So. The triggers, all the buttons, the touchpad over here, they're all going to have a, a sense, which is interesting. According to the PlayStation blog, the Dual Sense will keep much of what gamers love about the Dual Four Shock 4 intact, which is awesome, because that's a great controller, while also adding the new functionality and redefining the design. Touch was a big inspiration when designing the DualSense and the haptic feedback is one of the ways this new controller will help bring PlayStation 5 games to life. So, this is the controller's design. This is what I mean by interesting colors. Like, we have white, as you can see here. Yeah, but I'm sure it comes in different colors. I hope, but according to a lot of people, no. And the console is supposedly going to have the same color scheme too to match the controller. Mm. So the touch bar's uh, light used to be, I believe, at the back, which funny enough, I actually have the PlayStation 4 controller right near me. And just looking at it, yeah, the light is at the back and on the top of the controller, if you have the new DualShock 4, they have the light up the very top in a small slit. Well, what they decided to do this time around is they put the light on the sides, so it's gonna actually flash back and forth. And supposedly these could be individual lighting. Mm. So two lights. As for this, this is gonna be supposedly, could be your power light just for the PlayStation. The analog sticks have also had a bit of a change as well in the design. So you can see there's a bit of a, uh, if I can actually zoom in with this. Nah, it's not gonna work. But basically there's a bit of a feeling around the, the thumb sticks, a bit of a grip. To it. You can see here the uh, triggers kind of look the same, well, not exactly, like I'm just looking at my DualShock 4 controller. They've got the same feel, which I can see, it's more black, mine's more grey, but um, this is much bigger compared to the DualShock 4, the um, L1. Mm. I would love to know the, des uh, the design of it, why they chose to actually go with white. Yeah. This looks like it's going to be a USB-C slot. So this is going to be where you're going to be charging your controller from. Uh-huh. Um, and you can see there's a little slit for the light. So there could be light that bleeds through there. Sure. In here is the new button. So before what we had on the DualShock 4 was the share button. This is actually going to be called the create button. Okay. Now, of course, they talk about more in the article here, but I've done some reading about this earlier today in our stream. And you can see here, even the uh, D-pad, that's what I say it as an Xbox term, but <laughs> analog, whatever, same same thing. Uh, that's had a bit of a change as well, even looking at it. It looks like it's actually transparent this time around, because when I look at my one, it's not. Uh, the PlayStation logo is actually much bigger. I believe you can click that. I don't think it's a touch one. I think it's still a button. The interesting part this, about this controller is it actually has a built-in microphone. So if you don't have a headset, you can actually chat through the, uh, the oh, controller yeah. itself. It's just down there. I can see it. Yeah, there's this little thing. thing down here. So, yeah, pretty interesting design. And I believe that's a button for the mic. So indicates more. And I believe that's a light. you still got your speakers grill, as you can see there. It's a bit of a change from the DualShock 4. So... That's cool. 
And you can also see that they've actually, in a way, kind of spaced out the... Uh, Buttons. Well, the circle, X, triangle, and square, you know, they're, they're much wider compared to what I see on my DualShock 4 in front of me. And you can also see here that up top, instead of it saying options, they've actually changed it to like a menu button, similar to the Xbox controller, which I have over here. Yeah, it's identical, same button design there. So, really cool. I, I don't mind it, but I don't like the white, I'll be honest. I like the design. Put that back in the black. Not that. Anyway, so it goes more about what Sony's saying here. So Sony mentions that this feedback will add a a lot of powerful sensations you'll feel when you play, such as the slow grittiness of a, driving a car through mud, which is cool. Uh, adaptive triggers have also been incorporated into the L2 and R2 buttons, which is why they're much bigger and which will help players feel the tension of actions like when drawing a bow to shoot an arrow. It's cool. Fitting these new features into a brand new controller has a challenge for the design team. Isn't that interesting how they said, like drawing a bow to shoot an arrow and we have The Last of Us Part 2 coming out. Oh, yes. Funny that, yes. Anyway, uh, what were we up to? Design team, and they work closely with the PlayStation's hardware engineers to make this controller somewhat feel smaller than it would end up being. That's okay, that's cool. The angle of the hand triggers were changed, and some s subtle updates were made to the grip. Well, yeah, you can see that in design. They also gave thoughtful consideration into how to keep a strong battery life for the DualSense, and wanted to ensure the weight of the controller did not get out of hand. One thing that will be missing from the DualSense is the share button. So that's where I said about it's going to be now the create button. And yeah, it's cool. It's got a built in microphone array, as I said already. As for the color, they're saying it's not going to change, that it's basically going to be white and black. I'm hoping, I'm praying to God here, that we do have other color options. Like, I know PlayStation 4 has had a lot of different color options for the controller, so I can only, fingers crossed, hope they do yeah. the same thing, because... Might I'm be not... a bit later on, but... Yeah, just... Mm. Anyway, so, yeah, it's it's cool, and I didn't expect this today, because this is actually an Xbox Inside News Day. So, yeah. Next up. Call of Duty Modern Warfare's 2019 Season 3 is now available. And, oh, this this is good. What we have. Okay, so they're calling this patch update 1.19. It's available now. It's a 16 gig update. Well, it's 13, but on my Xbox, for some reason, they're showing 16. But uh, they're saying here it's a 13.6 gig update on Xbox One. 16 gig on PC. That's why I think they got that wrong. But anyway, it's probably 16 on Xbox, but who knows? Good change. It's 11.6 gig on PlayStation 4. And it includes a new operator, which, if you don't know, is Alex out of the campaign, which we also streamed. Uh, there's going to be some brand new multiplayer maps, new weapons, vehicle skins, and more. The roadmap includes the new operator Alex, a battle pass. Uh, which you can unlock for a, a 1,000 points of Call of Duty. You see, I said I said that I liked Alex in the campaign better than I liked the other bloke in the campaign, mm. just because he seemed like a stronger character and more built out to me. But that's just my opinion. Others could like Kyle better. But for me, it was Alex that was the stronger one. Yes, okay. So the multiplayer maps, are we have uh, Backlot, which is an actual old map, funny enough, from the other Call of Duty Modern Warfare. It's returning. We also have a new map called Sawmill. And we also have another map called In Incursion. 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 Ah, there we go. So, yes, it's for experiencing 10v10 and Grand War. So, it's going to have a more enclosed version of the area based around a central palace. Okay, cool. 
the new Warzone game mode is going to be quads. New weapons, we have the SK-5 and the Renetti. Is it? Renetti. Okay. And vehicle skins, which is cool because we haven't had vehicle skins. And there goes over a bunch of fixes and everything they've added as well. This is what the Season 3 looks like, so uh, pretty interesting. I can actually zoom that in a bit more, you can see. New weapons. It's cool we're getting a new pistol. Uh, it looks like an AK-47 from that picture if I zoom in more. And of course, it just hits it out. Yeah, kind of does. So, yeah, pretty cool. That's going to be Alex, the operator here, in case you're wondering on the side. In the season, we're going to have a Ronan Iska, I think. I can't really read that, but um, new multiplayer map. Hard Hat is going to return. That's a good map. I can't wait to see what that's going to be like. And I Isle 9, I think that says. It's in small writing on my monitor. New multiplayer game modes. We're going to have Gun Game Reloaded coming. And we're going to have a mode called Reinfected Ground War. Okay, that would be going to be interesting. We're also going to have some new weapon... They're saying this is a classified weapon. There's going to be gunsmith customization, so you can make some weird, wacky combinations. Uh, and there's new Warzone content coming throughout this whole season three. So, cool. awesome. That I am so looking forward to, and it's still downloading on my Xbox as we speak. Well, next up, Resident Evil 8. Okay, so this one actually is pretty interesting. They're calling this Village. Okay, so I am just trying to load this. There we go. Yeah, okay, we have got that idea. I put this on for a reason. Because you spammed me before. <laughs> okay, so Resident Evil 8 is going to be Village. It's going to focus supposedly on Chris Redfield, which is a character that's been in Resident Evil, even the movies as well, but... Uh, yeah, basically, he's an iconic character. And uh, it's going to, I guess, be more combat-like because we had Chris Redfield already in Resident Evil 7 and that was very first-person shooter. Yeah. According to this, the game is going to be out by spring 2021. It's going to be codenamed uh, Resident Evil Village. As you know, it's going to take place in a village. There's going to be some new stalker-type enemies uh, called the Witch, hence the reason why it's called Village. Uh, left for dead. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not that. <laughs> uh, basically, they're taking inspiration from the modern folk horror genre in this latest survival horror installment. Okay, so they're delving into the same sort of folk sort of thing that they did with mm. Resident Evil 7. Cool. Which is going to be, uh, well, maybe... Maybe set in Europe. I'm just going to add that maybe. Yeah. Because that's not guaranteed. Because don't tell me Joe's not freaking dead. <laughs> it's going to also give Chris Redfield. I believe we're also going to have even Leon might be in here. But uh, I love Leon. Leon's my favorite character in Resident Evil. We'll have to see what happens there. But yeah, it's going to be a very interesting title. But here's the interesting part about this. It's going to be first person. So it's oh. not going to be what you have in the new Resident Evil uh, 2 and 3. Cool. So where it's over the third-person view. Yeah, well, that worked in Resident Evil 7. I really enjoyed that. That added to the experience. Yeah, it added a lot more to the atmosphere to this. So, yeah, this I'm excited because I really did enjoy Resident Evil 7 in the first-person mode. Very scary. And if you tried the VR version, wow. So I can, I'm guessing there's going to be a VR version for Resident Evil 8 for first person. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Moving on. E3 2020 is not going to be getting a digital replacement event. Uh, and how are we going to get our news? Okay, so, according to this, they're saying that were exploring would explore other options for a digital showcase after cancelling the show but the ESA has now confirmed it will be skipping E3 20 turret entirely yeah I know wow. your face just <laughs> lit up in what <laughs> yes so there was talks that they were going to try and run this online like everyone else has been doing but now that ain't going to be happening 
The statement was provided to IGN and they're saying, quote, instead we will be working with the exhibitors to promote and showcase individual company announcements, including on the E3 website in the coming months. We look forward to bringing our industry and community together in 2021 to pre present a reimagined E3 that will highlight new offerings and thrill our audiences. So here's the other thing. Yesterday we were talking about Xbox yeah. Xbox was actually uh, going to pull out for even next year. We were saying something about this before. Yeah, we, we had talks about it. Now, they're saying that they're going to try and do an E3 next year. Well, if Xbox is pulled out entirely and going to be doing these events online, yeah, I don't think that's going to be happening, even for 2021. So... Yeah, we're still going to see some stuff around in June, but it won't be like the big E3 that we're so used to seeing. Yes, the world has changed. Okay, so this is a lot of news in one thing to show today, but today was the big inside Xbox. So much was revealed, and I have so much to talk about. So let's go. Okay, so this is the recap uh, we had a closer look at Obsidian's Entertainment's new game called Grounded it's going to enter the Xbox game preview with uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and Steam Early Access on July 28th 2020 as part of their announcement the team has also revealed a trailer which we will check out in a minute focusing on the single player experience of Grounded and there will be a first ever live stream with the Obsidian game director blah 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 Cool, cool. We will show you that in a minute. Closer look at the Xbox Series X technology. So they basically talked about uh, everything that the new Xbox Series X is going to bring. And they're talking about quick resume and the storage options. So basically, if you have an Xbox One and you have like a hard drive, you can just plug that straight into the Series X. It's going to be able to play all your Xbox Ones straight away. No, right. no issue whatsoever. Sounds pretty cool. Only problem is, if you have Xbox Series X games, this is where it changed in the wording, mm. you can't actually play Xbox Series X games onto a hard drive. So this is where they actually talked a bit more about this mm. and what this means. So if you have an Xbox Series X and you put it onto a standard hard drive, that ain't going to be a thing. You can, however, put it onto a standard SSD from the Seagate, which was showed before there's like a port in the back that you can stick the uh, SSD little card yeah there. so you'll be able to put your games on that and that will be basically the hot swapping alright so that's the way they're doing it and if you want to play a game they'll allow you to put it onto a hard drive but they won't allow you to play it off a hard drive you'll have okay. to send it from that hard drive back to the actual main internal storage so yeah there's also been talk about, uh, and funny enough, PlayStation 5 talked a lot about their audio. Xbox is going to do the same. And what they're doing is they're actually putting onto a separate chip to uh, do all this cool audio stuff with all of our sounds and games. Mm -hmm. And that part that they normally would have on the Xbox for the audio settings and all that are now freed up to actually allow more animations, more bigger worlds and everything. So... That's where we're going to get these much larger games. And they talked about Red Dead Redemption 2 and so many other open world games that we've had. GTA 6 is definitely going to have a, a big part to this. So they're saying about the evolution of the Xbox game bar continues on the Windows 10 PC. They're going to have access apps from partners like Razer, XSplit, Intel directly in the Xbox game bar for new widgets. No more having the alt tab and the separate apps while gaming. So this is going to be handy for us for streaming because we will be able to integrate this. Yes. So, very handy. They also announced some more great titles hit hitting Xbox Game Pass. Um, basically, failed to announce April 13th, Xbox Game Pass will be expanding to Japan and Korea. Xbox Game Pass for PC will launch in beta for gamers in Korea and will be included as part of the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Benefits, which is already available for gamers in this region. While all Xbox Game Pass services for console and PC will come to Japan for the first time. We also shared new titles joining the Xbox Game Pass library on the console, including Avastia Chronicles, Journey to the Salvage Planet. Awesome. Great. 
Overcooked 2, awesome, great. Football Manager 2020, Missed Over, Stranger Things 3, the game. I haven't checked that out yet. I have to check that out. I didn't even know there was a game. Yeah, I actually didn't know either. For the more details on that, they've got the whole thing on that. Cool. So then they've got Project X Cloud Preview. It's going to add some more games from EA. So those games are going to include Sims 4, Unravel 2, Dragon Age Inquisition. That's an awesome game. Uh, yeah. So that's for your phone. In case you didn't know, X Cloud is for your phone. And you'll be able to go anywhere. Not that we can go anywhere, but. Yeah, that's the plan. Cool. Least. Forza Street Races in the mobile will be coming on May 5th. So... Mm, right, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Breaking down five things you need to know. So Gears Tactics was showed off today. There's some gameplay that was shown off. Uh, First it's of available. Is the next Gears of War game? Or it's what? a tactics game, so from a top-down perspective. Of Gears of War. Yes. And it's going to be available in April 28th on Windows 10 PCs, Steam, Xbox Game Pass for PC beta. And players will resume the role of Gabriel Gabe Diaz as he recruits, equips, and commands his squad on a mission to hunt down the rent relentless leader of the low-cast army, Yukon. Yukon. <laughs> Yukon. Interesting name. Okay, but yeah. Then we also got the Sea of Thieves, so here we go. There's some information here. Yeah, when we played that, that wasn't very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the new Sea of Thieves Ships of Fortune updates arriving later this month. Okay, cool. Ships of Fortune adds a new depth to games trading companies, allowing players the option to represent their favorite trading companies and in mysteries for boosted rewards, exclusive cosmetic items. What's more, there's going to be a new mysterious company known as the Reaper Bones. It was also going to be making their debut, tasking players with pillaging rival ships and taking their flags and loot as trophies. So, okay, cool. cool. A new batch of ID at Xbox games has also come in Xbox One. Okay, so we also get a brand new look at that last campfire, Dark Fantasy from Hello Games. The people that make No Man's Sky, so not bad. Not my cup of tea, but yeah. Uh, beautiful art style with puzzles, unique experience. Yeah. There's also a new trailer for Atomic Corps. In Tony Crops. Oh, okay. An action packed farming simulator. Yeah, okay. Didn't know that's a thing, but where you must cultivate and defend at the last farm in the post apocalypse wasteland. Finally, it was announced that the action-packed top-down shooter Hotline Miami Collection is not only coming to Xbox One, but is actually available right now. That's their surprise. So, there's a lot. Um, Grounded is the real cool one, and I want to show this off with everyone, so... See if we can get the trailer to load. You are not dead. I will be helping you out today. First things first, you're not supposed to be here. Secondly, you are very, 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 very small. Please refrain from panicking. Thirdly, the machine that could return you to your normal size is currently out of order. And everything in this backyard wants to, uh, eat you. Again, your tiny panic will accomplish nothing. You are going to need to find a way to survive out here. I would recommend building a base, maybe a simple shelter of some sort. Oh, and weapons. You'll probably need some weapons. But you should be fine. Unless you get eaten, you'll either be fine or you will be dead. It's really up to you. Oh, and you might come across some strange things while looking around. I'm not sure who put them here or what they want. What I do know is that they're watching.
So, yeah, pretty... Uh, Terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's one word for it. I don't but, like um, the spiders. No, I'm not going to like it. So, the it's spiders. from Obsidian Entertainment. If you don't know who they are, they make Fallout New Vegas. Right. So, yeah, they also made... Uh, God, I was just, had it on my tip of my tongue. Yep, that word right there, spiders. Nope, nope <laughs> can't do spiders. No. Yeah, okay, so... I'm trying to remember the game now. It's just went to my head and then it's just gone. The Outer Worlds. There we go. I had it, but then it just went. But yeah, Fallout New Vegas and Outer Worlds. This game looks awesome. Now, the funny part is it's actually first person and third person, which they sneakily threw in first person. And it's only showed first person. a glimpse. <laughs> So yeah, it's looking cool. I can't wait to check this out. It's big enough for uh, tiny as it is against a giant spider. <laughs> yeah. Now we moved on to technology. Okay. So first up, Google's new Pixel Buds are now expected for the end of April or maybe even early May. So they're saying in this article. Google was going to uh, release this as soon as this month. It was first announced back in October, as we know. And they're saying, we are waiting to keep you updated on the status of your pre-order from this person that's ordered the Pixel Buds. But we have been informed by Google that this new product is expected to release with the arrival of our warehouse by the end of April or even early May. We're continuing to work with Google to receive this product as soon as possible. And once we receive this will get your order. So that's from a retailer that um, has got it. So, yeah, Google is still going to release the Google Pixel Buds. Awesome. It's These do look pretty interesting, though. So Pixel Buds 2, they're on, our, on the way. Hey, cool. Okay, next up, OnePlus Warp Charger. 30 wireless charger has leaked. Okay, so... This is the 30 watt charger. We actually had a talk about this, that the OnePlus 8 was gonna have wireless charging. Well, now we actually have a bit of a, a bit of documents as physical proof. As you can see there, that's gonna be what the design is. This is actually a document from a book that's leaked out. OnePlus 8 Pro will support wireless charging, as we know, but this smaller 8 probably won't. Well, we don't know that yet. New warp charger is 30 watt wireless bits uh, at the same power as the OnePlus wired warp charge. So we actually talked about that another day with the um, charging of the earphones. So we're going to have that same system now with the phones. It's an interesting design, I have to admit. Um, but yeah, it's going to be pretty powerful and it's going to charge your phone in just crazy amount of time. Like Look at this. They're saying from 1% to 50% in just half an hour. That is insane. <laughs> Day's power in half of an hour claims that the wide warp charge managed for the previous OnePlus phones also claims to be 90% efficient. That's pretty good. Losing very little of that power to heat. That's good. Mm. So your phone should be getting almost all that 30 watt its charging cores with real-time communication happening between the phone and the charger to better tune that power. So, cool. Yeah. Let's just see what happens with this phone. Next up, Google will require seamless updates on devices with Android 11. Okay, so about time. It's about time. And again, it's about time. Because mm. if you have an Android phone and you've been going, oh, when are we going to get the new updates for my whatever phone, Samsung? Uh, interesting what you just did. Yeah. Uh, your Motorola, your Nokia, your Oppo. Well, this if you get Android 11, Google's going to basically require all devices launching with Android 11 to support this seamless updates support. So, basically, they're saying that in this document, if it fails to read the resort present uh, since devices must pass the chip through Google's apps uh, Android manufacturers will have to support the updates on the voice launch with Android 11 
it's pretty technical, but it's a big deal. Um, benefits, background seamless upgrades, which allows the phone to install patches, even major updates while you're still actually using the phone. So instead of what you normally would do, and this is a big thing and a big deal for everyone, right? Normally when you get an update on your phone, it stops your phone from working. You gotta yeah. wait to it to install. Now, Google's gonna change that system. So you'll be able to use your phone always with no stoppage whatsoever in your phone. There's no system wow. update. It's That's gonna just impressive. go in the background and when it's time, it's probably just gonna flash your screen about maybe five seconds and then boom. Yeah, so no more stopping what you need to do on your phone uh, according to what's happening here. But uh, yeah, they're saying here outside the safety, it's convenient when you have to store updates the long way, which means devices spend minutes sitting in recovery, slowly flashing updates with monthly security patches and devices seamlessly taking 15 minutes plus to install those updates. This will make a dent in your phone's usability if you do it at the wrong time, which is correct because it always happens at the wrong time. I believe that you're also going to be able to stop this from happening. I believe there'll be a little button that you click and say, do not update at any time, you know. But uh, yeah, pretty important. And I thought this is a, an article that I think a lot of people... Yeah, that's going to be a game changer. Yeah, and I think even a lot of other manufacturers, even Apple will probably even look at this as well so yeah mm. awesome cool cool okay netflix is and this is an article that's everywhere for some reason today so i just had to put it on netflix is going to introduce new parental controls to hide movies tv series from kids profiles the controls are in a dedicated profile hub section so basically I would say in the manage profile button. Mm -hmm. On lockdown, Netflix has revealed a series of updates to its controls. The update aims to help guardians set the right boundaries for their children. You can now block an individual series or film by name and it won't show up at all on your kid's profile. Earlier, individual titles were simply locked behind a pin. However, you can filter out these titles by age category. Further, Netflix is going to expand the pin control feature to all profiles. Okay, that's good. That's mm -hmm. good. It means you can lock adult profiles with four-digit code and keep kids from accessing them. Moreover, parents can also browse what kids have been watching in their Netflix profiles. Scary, but yeah, okay. The Control Hub is basically going to be in a dedicated profile and parental setting in the accounts on Netflix.com. So, oh, good. So they won't be watching Tiger King now, at least. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. So, next up, Facebook app is going to be switching to a bottom bar for Android. And this is about time. Really. So, it's a server-side update that's rolling out slowly. They're saying out in here, it says out widely. But as we know, Facebook is the slowest company on the planet Earth to release an update to everyone. And when they do, they it's screw stuff up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, we're still waiting on our Facebook redesign for the uh, desktop version. Still not here yet. It's supposed yes. to have supposed to be rolled out. And you can bet, if they screw up, we'll be reporting on it too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there's going to be a bottom bar. So, normally it would be on the top like you normally have on your Android phone. It's going to be now moved down the bottom. This is great because if you have a very tall phone like a Note phone or a Plus series phone you're now going to be able to reach everything down the bottom, like Twitter, right? Cool. But there's also another good thing to this, okay? Which someone hasn't really mentioned in this article. If they put this down to the bottom, that means that they can actually release the same updates to iOS and Android at the same time. So no longer will you have features that work on iOS, and then no longer will you have features that work on Android. They will both have the same features because they will have the same interface and same Perfect. design. So, hooray. It's a win-win. I just hope that it is here. <laughs> yeah. Just roll it out already, Facebook. And, okay, so there's a bit of a rumor going around uh, as well, but we also have another thing that's also just popped up here, which I just grabbed. Uh, Samsung is working on a new high-end tablet but it's about to be a bit bigger. So, 
The manufacturer is making Android tablets. Uh, they've been going up to the Galaxy Tab S6, which is an awesome tablet, as you can see there. All right. This time, the Intel is not of one, but two Galaxy Tab S7s. Okay, so they're trying to follow Apple here with the iPad Pro. All right. If the branding follows the flagship phones, the Tab S20 models this year. So it could be the S20. Sam Mobile is reporting on two sets of mobile uh, model numbers for the high octane tablets set to be released later this year, codenamed SMT87X and SMT97X. The Tab S6 was released under these two major branches. The SMT860 is a Wi-Fi only model and the, T, uh, the SMT865 is an LTE model. The prior Tab S releases have had this same model number. So the 9 would be new here, basically. So yeah, that's how they're getting this information. They find this info of these numbers changing. That's when they know there's big changes coming into what the name is going to be. It's ex uh, suspected that the new series will come into two sizes, 11 inch display, and the other will be a 12.4 inch display. The Tab S6 screen is currently 10.5, so it's going to increase. Is that going to be a little bit of an inconvenience, though, by people? Hmm, yeah. The larger display also means more room, and of course, which is going to use the tablet's S Pen digital stylus, which I love the S Pen. It also means less cramming on any keyboard accessory that will eventually come along. That said, there's also an... Uh, the iPad Pro territory here so these aren't going to be the Galaxy View which was a very big tablet but um, yeah that's cool awesome so Matthew you can do your news yes well in entertainment news today we have a hilarious story about Harley Quinn's director she claims that it's fans' fault that the movies flopped. Hmm. Really? Yes. She's accusing fans that didn't go and watch the movie. It was just because, oh, they're anti-pro-women or whatever. Uh huh. Which is ridiculous. Like, if it's not a good, if it's not a good story, then I'm not gonna go see it. I'm sorry to say that, but I'm not gonna go see it just because it has. Women starring all cast. Uh -huh. Story needs to come first. Yeah, okay, so tell us a bit more. Well, it's the film essentially ended up being a blast on white male privilege. Like, rubbing it in men's face, saying, oh, you know, women are just as strong as men, pushing that, rather than focusing on a good story. Hmm. So then fans have picked up on this and said, well, I'm not going to see it. And of course, then the director got angry about this and said, well, you're just a bunch of woman haters or whatever. Mm. And yeah, she's basically having a temper tantrum saying, well, we should have made more money. Make a better movie. All I have to say. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot in this article to read through. We could be here for a long time. Pretty, uh... It started. It starred the uh, iconic Margot Robbie. Uh, she played Harley Quinn on Suicide Squad. For those who didn't watch that, but mm. I'm sure everybody did. Um, and also, the villain in this was surprisingly Ewan McGregor, which okay him. Yeah, he. And if, if you don't know who that is, he plays Obi Wan Kenobi in Star Wars and many other great films. Yes. So nice. Yes, yeah, so they could have made such a good, compelling story with this actor utilising his talents and stuff, but yet they tried to push this feminine agenda, and I don't think... Yeah, so Anyway, popped. moving on to our next story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so tell us uh, about this article, Matthew. Yes. Disney may check visitors' temperatures when the park reopens. Now... This is a good move for Disney, I would say, because mm. even if we somehow found, you know, a vaccine for this COVID-19 that's going on, mm. 
we'd still need some sort of check for those who would be at really at risk because anyone who's anybody visits Disney, whether it's old, young, middle-aged, mm. you know. So it's really good that Disney is saying, you know what, we're going to have health checks when we reopen. Of course, it's not said when it's going to reopen, but uh, it's looking like maybe 2021. Wow, that's pretty. Middle of 2021. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. That's pretty long. Yeah. So we'll go without dreams for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we will then. <laughs> yeah. Next story. Um, another Disney story, and this is Disney Plus. Oh, it's a Disney again. <laughs> yes, uh, Disney seems to be in the limelight a lot lately. But you can expect more small movies to be pushed back from theatre releases. So it's going to bypass it? Yes. It's going to be on Disney Plus instead. They're um, streaming. Okay, so I kind of expect that this was going to happen eventually, but... Yes, because everybody's going digital. They're trying to adapt to their movies on how to bring it out faster. I think this is pretty good, but those who really want to watch the Disney classic movies, they have to sign up for a subscription. Now, of course, you can take the free trial that they offer out there for those who want to watch these movies, but... Still, just limiting it to one demographic with Disney Plus, I don't see you making much money off that. Yeah, okay. So they're saying here, Anthemus Fall was going to be a debut film on Disney Plus, but originally it was going to be in the cinemas. Okay, so interesting. So eventually they're going to be like Netflix. I think we're going to see this happening. Yes. Uh, don't bore well. Former Fox Souls, The New Mutants, and History of David, and Antlers, and The Woman in the Window. None of these films have been given a cinema release date in Disney's recent announcement, leading to people thinking that it's going to end up on Disney's own streaming platforms, as Disney Plus or Hulu, which is in the US. Yes. So, all four films are were slated to open in the theaters. Hmm. Okay. Okay, next story. Warner Brothers we have on the news for the first time now. Um, they've brought out, and well, recently, that a Lego Shazam movie has been brought out for this. Yes, this is for the kids. Yes, so if you're looking for a movie to entertain the kids, this is your movie. <laughs> yes. Um, I believe you recently found this article for this movie and he told me a bit about it so Lego got together with DC and they said huh Shazam did pretty good as a movie how about we try and make a Lego version Mm. Um, it's said to have the satire sort of Lego comedy that we're used to Mm. about everything falling apart and you know that trope which kids will love Mm. so it's called DC Shazam Magic and Monsters. Hmm. So it's supposed to be going to be available, uh, they're saying, viewed by Home Entertainment on digital starting on April 28th, 2020, and on Blu ray as a combo pack or and DVD on June 16th, 2020. So that's what it looks like. It's probably going to be a funny movie. Uh, who stars in it? I'd love to know. Sean Austin, Lord of Rings franchise, and Goonies is going to be in the stellar cast as the voice of Shazam. Troy Baker. Yes. Troy oh, Baker. okay. Here and we go. And Nolan North are going to be in there as well. So I was some... waiting for you to read that. <laughs> <laughs> there is some big names in here, and as we talked about yesterday in the news update, Nolan North, who voices Nathan Drake in Uncharted movie, games, and yeah, everything, you know. He's, he's probably going to be in the movie. There's talk of that happening too, so... Yes. Yeah, so Nolan North is going to be in this thing as well. There's so many other names I'm actually reading out here too. But, um... James Arnold's going to be in there. Yeah, there's quite a lot. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty funny movie. Hmm. Yeah, Grey Griffin, Scooby-Doo franchise, yep, know that. So, yeah, check that movie out. 
If you're into all the Lego series, highly recommend it. Any Lego movie I've ever seen has been hilarious, really. Okay. Our next story. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Um, we're coming to the sad part of our uh, news broadcast. Um, unfortunately, we reported a story back on our last, yeah, last news week. update. Yeah. Last, no, this was our first news story, I think. Yeah, it was last week, yeah. Yeah. Um, we reported that John Prine was in a stable condition. Unfortunately, he's fallen ill to COVID-19 and he has passed away at the age of 73. Yeah. Now, John Prine was known for being a legendary folk singer. Um, he broke through the folk scene in 1971. Self-titled album Prine was hailed by critics by his musical peers for his seen observational powers, moderate sense of humour and f finely wrought portraits of human condition. From his trenchant tale of Vietnam vets downward spiral, his unceremonious homecoming, Sam Stone, to his empathetic expressions of loneliness of old age, Angel from Montgomery, and hello there. Hello in there. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. So we've lost a legend in folk music. He was uh, hospitalised on uh, March 26th in Nashville with uh, the COVID-19 symptoms. See, we're getting used to saying COVID. Yes. On the heels of the previous hospital, uh, hospital hospitalizations yeah. of heart, uh, heart issues. issues. And so that didn't help his... Um, that didn't help him. <laughs> no. Anyway. In addition to treatments for the throat cancer from uh, 1998 and lung cancer in 2013... Both affected his singing voice, but he uh, continued touring regularly up through to the last year. But there is also something added onto this. It has now come out that John Prine's wife has contracted COVID-19 as well. Ooh. Yes. So she's currently in isolation and in tr treatment. I don't think she's as bad as John Prine, though. So I think she's doing all right so far. Of course, we'll keep you updated on that story if it, you know, d as it develops. Hmm. If we hear anything more. Uh, yes, uh, the next story. Alan Garfield, um, Nashville conversation star dies to COVID-19 as well. So, yes, he's passed away. Yeah, this just as seems well. to... He dies at age 80, so he was right on the threshold for yeah, COVID falling victim. Yes. Yeah. Wow. This COVID-19 is getting out of hand. Absolutely. He was known for... Um, let me read down here. You're really lost for words when you're like reading these articles. That's the thing. Like We're trying to present the news, but at the same time, we're also reading the news. And it's like, wow... Yes, he played in Nashville, like the show Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, someone's... The co-star, Renee Bla Blakely, shared on news and Facebook, writing, Rip Alan Garfield, the great actor who played my husband in Nashville, has died today of COVID. I hang my head in tears. Condolences to the family and friends. I will post more later. Cast and crew sending love. So, 1998 so, yes. and 2004... 1998 yes. was the year I was born. Yeah, and he suffered strokes in those time frames, so... Yeah. Now, I also have to go back to tech news for a bit. I just stumbled upon an article from Samsung that's just come out. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can bring that to that screen again. It's not coming through. I'll try... Hang on, we'll head back. Okay. There we go. We're good again. Okay, so this is a new article that's just come out. Samsung's patient application shows a phone with a quad curved display. So this is pretty interesting. This is the design that Samsung's looking at doing and they're saying this is going to be the S30. This is the crazy part. Okay. So 
as we know, there's going to be another Samsung phone next year. Y30. Uh, well, we got the S20. Some people are saying it could be the S21. Some people are saying it's the S30. I don't know. Me, personally, I think it's going to be the S21. So I think they've got that wrong. But according to this, this is what we're going to get for the next year's Samsung smartphone. So this is pretty big news because you can actually see here, this is the design of what it's going to be based off. It's going to be curved everywhere, right? Curves all over the place. Quad curved display. So this is design. It's going to be somewhat like the Huawei P40 Pro. And uh, it looks sleek. Yeah, so it's basically a design render. They're taking it off what Samsung's uh, put out, as you can see here. This is what kind of reminds me of the iPod Touch. <laughs> well, a little yeah. bit around. But you can also see there's no camera, there's no punch hole or anything like that. So unless this is just a, you know, it's just it's probably just a make mock up of what the shape's going to be. Um, we don't know where the camera's going. It could be a mock up, but it could indeed. This could be what we're looking at. This could be the S21. Mm. So there could be a camera under the display. The Maybe. So, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that one in there. Uh, just want to get on the latest news. And as we know, news breaks as we're speaking. So. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, for the news update. Yes. Um, now, as you know, or that we posted today on Facebook, uh, we did a live stream for hashtag hope from home. Um, which was about COVID-19 and those suffering with it. Um, we tried to raise money for that. And we will be continuing to do so this week. Yes, that's right. We've left the found funds open. So you can go and donate for all week. Yep. We've raised a dollar point one cent. <laughs> yep. So A uh, dollar makes a huge difference. So those... Tuning in, come Those and join us. It, yeah, we're going to be uh, doing another stream tomorrow. We're going to be also joining some other people. We're going to be uh, doing some other games. I believe by tomorrow we should have the new Call of Duty update installed by then, yes. season three. So we will be checking that out. And like I said, we're going to have other people. We're going to be joining uh, Megan in her own stream as well to watch what she's doing. So absolutely. Yeah, we're going to try and get the stream going around 12, hopefully. Maybe it could be 1. 12, 12.30. Could, yeah, maybe. We're, go, we're going to try our absolute hardest. So, yeah, anything else? We always do this. There's always something. <laughs> no, that, that seems to be pretty much it. Yeah. Covered everything. So that is your news update for the 8th of April, Wednesday. Thank you all for watching, and we will be back tomorrow with, I guess, another news update. <laughs> yes, if there is news to report. <laughs> See you guys. See ya.